If you saw our last video, I gave you a tour of the outside of our rental motorhome here in Italy. I'm now gonna take you inside so we can see what we like and don't like about international RVs compared to North American RVs. As Peter mentioned in our previous video, where he went around the outside of the RV and told you everything about the exterior, he mentioned this is a Citron chassis with a manual transmission. So one of the first things you notice that's different about it is that there is a stick. Hasn't been much of a problem for us since we actually own a manual transmission vehicle already. Our CRV is manual transmission, so it hasn't been an issue. Just be aware that in Europe, it is very common for RVs to be manuals, not automatics. Now the cockpit is pretty much standard, nothing too exciting here, except these windshield screens. These are fantastic. They close and provide complete privacy, and they're actually just magnetic. They stick together in the center with a magnet, and they retract completely into the A-pillar when not in use, which is really great. They're matched on the sides with similar shades. Literally slide this out, and rotate this around and it magnets into place. Complete privacy from the side windows or if you need it, blocking the light since these windows don't have screens so leaving them open means you're gonna get bugs. When they're not in use, they just collapse down. They're just an accordion and then this little slider slides right up into place and locks them into the track. Now they're completely out of the way. Now we're gonna close these windshield shades because the sun is out and it's very warm. <laughs> Click and they're done. As Peter pointed out from outside, there's a great vent window right here that also has shades. Slide it down to provide just a screen. They can be separated so you can actually access the window to open and close it. And if you just wanna have privacy, the night blind closes up, keeps the heat out, keeps the sun out, but also enables you to open it completely while you're driving if you wanna see that mountain view that's up ahead of you. Both the driver and passenger seat swivel around in order to become part of the living area. It's literally just a pull of a handle. The seat swivels all the way around, and then you can slide it back to get it a little bit out of the way. Now it's part of the living space. Same thing with the driver's seat. Release the handle, swivel it around. Now it's a seat for the dining table. The dining table you can just lift up on it and slide it forward or backward in order to give people more room on either side, which has really been handy. So you can slide it closer to the driver, slide it closer to the passenger, or put it somewhere in between in order to balance out the space. It's been working really great as both a dining table and a workspace, so we can use our laptop, iPad, everything while we're sitting here in the living area. The table also gets bigger. This little section here pulls out, lifts up and locks into place. You can seat two people there, two people in the driver and passenger seat, and one person here, all comfortably, plenty of room. It's almost as big, actually it's bigger than the table we have in our Class A back home. Pull it out, slide it back in, and it's gone. Screen door Peter already showed from outside, works fantastically, closes up out of the way completely, but keeps all the bugs out. When you come in the door, the light switches are all perfectly convenient. There's a one switch right here for the patio light. These two switches work ceiling lights both here in the living area, as well as right in the bathroom hallway so you can light your way into the RV. And then our favorite one is this last switch which turns on the indirect lighting. There's LED strip lights that run along the whole length of the RV from the living room all the way back to the bedroom. And the really cool part is the fact that the way they're mounted, they actually shed light in behind the cabinet. So in here, it's actually lighting up this area. In this cabinet, it actually sheds light in here. So when you open the cabinet door, when these lights are on, the cabinets themselves are lighted as well. That was really smart. The lights themselves, these indirect lights also dim, just to push and hold on the switch, and the lights will go dimmer, which is, again, really nice when you just want some indirect light to keep the, the inside of the RV lit up without actually having direct light. So these lights mounted in the ceiling are actually mounted underneath the drop-down bed. So if you had a larger family and it wasn't just two people traveling, 
there's actually a very comfortable bed space right here in the middle of the room. There are headrests that mount here on either side, so if you have passengers riding with you, you can have the headrests. Those need to come off in order to raise and lower this. But it's just the push of a button, brings the bed down from the ceiling. As it comes down, it pulls a curtain in order to block the window. And it even has its own little separator curtain here in order to provide some privacy while the kids or guests are sleeping. Pretty smart little setup and it just tucks right away when you're not using it. We have not used this at all while we're here because we're just using the bed in the back. But it's great to know if you have more people, you've got space for them. In the center here in the RV is the main control panel that controls everything for basically all systems. So on this panel, it's just a touch. This is very similar to what we had in England, just a touch control panel where you can turn all 12 volt power on or off. You can toggle the patio light on in addition to the switch by the door. There's one right here. This turns all lights in the RV on or off. So it just turns power to the lights on or off. The water pump switch here and then the aux, which actually handles an outlet for the bed itself. You've got battery monitoring capabilities here and tank monitoring capabilities. Uh, pretty much just like in our RVs back in North America, the tank monitoring isn't exactly accurate. Our gray tank shows 100% pretty much after we used the sink the first time. Probably because this is a rental and the tanks aren't being maintained the same way we would do it for ourselves. Fresh tank shows 50%, which is about right, based off of what we saw from Peter's exterior tour. The control panel to the right right here is for the Truma Combi, and that's for both heat and hot water. So you can either set just the heat, turn it on or off, set your temperature as needed. You can set the water, which is either water heater off. You can set it to an eco mode, which sets the temperature for the hot water a little bit lower and cycles the water heater on and off with the furnace as it comes on. Turn it just to hot, which would be, again, a slightly higher temperature, but would specifically heat the water directly as opposed to relying on the, hot, the heat cycling on and off. Or if you really need it fast, you can turn it to boost mode. It's an additionally hot source of water. It raises the temperature a little bit more and it heats it very quickly. The system's been working great for us. The furnace is extremely quiet, heats the small space in here up very quickly and seems to use very little propane. Um, the hot water is the same thing, whether we're running the heat or not, it heats the water up very quickly. It has a very small tank and then it's sort of like a, an instant hot water heater from that point. It uses that small tank to heat up, but then continuously makes more as you're showering or make, doing dishes. Refrigerator freezer right below here. This is a Dometic three-way unit, so it will run off of propane. It will run off 110, uh, actually, excuse me, 240 volt power when you're plugged into the campground, or it will run off of 12 volt when the engine is running and the alternator is providing the extra juice. So it's very versatile, gives you a lot of options for how to keep things cold. As you can see, we haven't had much in the freezer area. There's we ate a, all the gelato. We ate all the gelato. That's a problem we have. And then the refrigerator space, plenty of room for a vacation. We haven't necessarily been cooking on board all that much, but it gives us plenty of room to have some milk for some cereal or coffee in the morning, eggs, that kind of thing. Now, of course, eggs don't actually have to be refrigerated. When you pick them up in the grocery store, the weird part is you're gonna find them out in the middle of the store somewhere on a shelf, not in the refrigerator. Uh, they don't wash the eggs before they package them, which keeps the protective layer on them and they don't need to be refrigerated, but we're just used to it. We keep them in the fridge just to force a habit. In the kitchen area, pretty much standard. You've got your sink with a nice faucet. It is plastic, but chromed, so it looks nice and it's a nice European design. And then a three burner cooktop, which gives plenty of room. There's a nice large burner. Of course, we're in Italy. We want to make a lot of pasta. So a nice big pasta pot goes on there. We've got a little espresso maker so we can make espresso or Americano, and it just covers up with a glass cover. Really easy. The windows are the same design and the window coverings are the same design as what we had in England, and it works really well. It's a two-piece system. There's a screen that releases and rolls up into the top. On the bottom, this is the day-night shade that blocks it out and gives privacy. And then the windows, click into various positions. They latch into place here to keep them secure. Or when you unlatch it 
and you push it open, you'll hear it click, and then it just holds itself open at various angles. The nice part is that by tilting up this way, it protects you from rain, so you can leave the window open to get ventilation even if the weather outside isn't very nice. You just push it all the way out until it releases and then it comes in. One difference from what we had in England is that the actual locking mechanism has a two position option. You can pull it all the way closed and latch it for security, but if you need to leave the window open but keep it locked for security and you can still get some venting, you put it into this middle position, you can latch all of the latches that way. The window has a little bit of a gap to let air in, but it's still secure so you can leave the RV and not worry about anybody getting in. There's plenty of cabinet space for all of our needs so far with food and dishes and everything. Uh, we've got plenty of wine, we are in Italy. Glasses, plates, mugs for coffee. Down below here in the bottom cabinets, there are pots and pans, all the silverware we need, including a corkscrew for the wine that of course we bought while we were here in Italy. Uh, so this has been working fine, no issues there as far as storage is concerned. Moving into the back, we get to the bathroom area, which is split, which is another nice feature. This floor plan was one of the reasons we wanted to rent this particular RV. We don't like having a wet bath where the shower and the toilet and the sink are all in one area. And when you shower, you get the whole bathroom wet. So the shower is separate on the driver's side. And then this side is the sink and the toilet. They have a nice arrangement where when you open this door fully open, it latches into place and provides the bedroom area to be a nice big area for showering and getting ready. And of course you can then close this if you just need to use the toilet and have privacy, but still let everyone else get in and out of the bedroom. The interesting thing is this latching mechanism is actually magnetic. When you release it, the latch itself stays recessed until it comes in contact with the catch plate here and that magnetically pulls it back out. Then you turn the handle to release it and the catch stays in. So now you don't have to worry about walking past the door and catching it on your belt buckle. Shower is actually a really good size. It's just big enough to be usable and not bang your elbows around while you're in there showering, but not so big it's taking up too much room in the RV. Has a nice European style wand. Again, it's plastic but chromed, so it has a nicer feel and look while still being light. Um, and seems to be pretty water conservation savvy. Uh, we're on coming up on day four now of this dry camping stay. We still haven't filled up our itty bitty little gray tank yet, but we've been showering on board every night. Have not been cooking as much every day since we're in an area where we're going out to eat more, but still pretty impressed that we haven't filled the gray tank up yet. Another nice feature in the shower is the fact that there are actually two drains, one in the back left corner and one in the front right corner. So regardless of how you're particularly tilted in the RV, the water ends up draining and because they're recessed a little bit, you don't end up standing in a puddle of your own shower water while you're showering, even when the RV isn't level. The only thing in the shower that could really be improved on is the fact that the floor itself is completely smooth. It doesn't have any kind of texturing on it, so once it gets wet and soapy, it's particularly slippery. So that would be a nice improvement they could make on that design. The doors themselves stay, latch out of the way. There are latches at the top that just hold them open so they don't rattle around while you're driving. Unlatch it and it pulls forward and the two of them actually pressure into one another and just hold themselves completely sealed while you're in there showering. It's actually tilted out a little bit. It's sort of like that curved shower rod. Gives you a little bit of extra room, but then they open fully wide and latch back into place on the side and don't rattle around while you're driving. In the shower itself, there's a vent right above it, so that way you can vent the moisture out while you're showering. It has a screen, of course, to keep bugs out, and it has a nightshade, latches into multiple positions, so if you just wanna dim the light or block the light, you've got complete privacy. Makes it a lot easier to sleep, especially if you're staying in a Sasta in a parking lot and you might have a light overhead. One thing that is lacking, even with the towel bar in the shower for hanging up wet things, there's just not enough places to hang things in the RV. It's true in just about every RV we've ever encountered. Now, on in the toilet room, on the rear wall, there are two hooks for hanging towels or clothes, so that is helpful, but that's pretty much it, other than that bar in the shower. The toilet room itself, pretty standard. There's a toilet and a sink. Nothing too extravagant here. The toilet is a simple slide the latch open, 
Down here you slide it from close to open in order to use the toilet. And once you're done and you've flushed, close it again. It goes right down into the cassette, which is then removable out the side of the RV. So another nice thing, the bathroom has its own window, which is great for ventilation while you're in here with the same combination screen and shade. Nice feature here, the medicine cabinet has actually a sliding door. There's a latch on the side that just latches it closed for travel mode. And as you slide it open, you get access to the medicine cabinet. Great storage for all the stuff you need in the bathroom. You can slide the mirror over in front of the sink, which has been handy when shaving or doing anything like that, because now it's right underneath a light. But you can get it out of your way when you're done by just sliding it back into place. The bedroom is mostly bed. So there's the two twin size beds on either side. This middle section here, there is a pullout shelf that slides out and there's an additional cushion that sits in the middle. So you can make this into one larger bed area. Lots of cabinet space above the bed. And there's another vent here, which is great. So when you're sleeping in the bedroom, you can have the windows open on either side. You can have the roof vent open. The roof vent here in the bedroom and the one in the kitchen are identical. They've got the dual screen and blind situation. So you can have it one way or the other or any way in between. So you can get air or light your choice. The vent itself has a pull handle. It's a mechanical system. You literally just pull on this handle, slide it closed and it latches into place so that the it's nice and secure can't be opened from the outside to open it you push in on this button and pull the handle down and then you can see here there's several different places where you can put it there are detents to lock it into place there's just a little bit of a vent mode so now it's latched closed but is letting air out without getting too much air in you can go to another level which is a little bit more open and actually has these pull-up tabs so that you can latch the handle into place so that it can't be moved. Now you can push it fully open and it locks into place with the vent almost completely vertical. And now you've got a lot of air space. Pull the screen closed. Oops, that's the blind. Pull the screen closed. And now you've got great ventilation. One thing about this particular RV that we rented, it does not have air conditioning in the house, just the chassis. So up front while we're driving, we have AC. Luckily, because we're here in the shoulder season, it's been very comfortable temperatures. May get a little bit warm during the day when we're out and about, but every night it's been cool. With the windows open or the vents open, we've been able to keep it quite comfortable. While we were in the very north in the Dolomites, we had all the windows closed, a vent open, and the heat running because it got down almost to freezing. So you may have noticed in touring around that there was not actually a wardrobe cabinet anywhere based off the bathroom position and the way the beds are situated. That's because that's down here. There's a little roller accordion door that slides out of the way. This is actually amazingly big storage. Uh, we're not using it for hanging clothes, but there is a clothes bar in here. Uh, and so you can hang your wardrobe in here. There is a matching unit on the other side under the driver's side bed on this side of the RV. Exact same kind of thing, same storage, same clothing bar. So we're actually using this for storing camera gear because it's a great spot and is really hidden. Uh, and putting our empty luggage in it. Um, but if you needed to use this for clothing, you could of course put your luggage down below in the basement, put the bikes on the bike rack, and now you've got good storage for clothes. Would be plenty for you know a two to three week vacation to have plenty of clothing hanging here. The space here, I would say, has been the best of all of the rentals we've had internationally. Uh, this is definitely the one. The floor plan is the nicest. The overall fit and fitment of everything in the RV is the nicest of any of the ones that we've had so far. Um, everything's been working really great. So there you have it. There's the inside of our motorhome here in Italy. Now, not every RV in Italy or in Europe or England or <laughs> anywhere else that you might go internationally is going to be just like this. But we've found so far that Many of these systems are very consistent outside North America. One of the things that we love the most about international travel in an RV is the fact that it basically provides all the benefits we like about domestic traveling in an RV, which is you move into the RV once, you've got all of your stuff with you for wherever you go, and it's not in and out of hotels all the time. So yeah, once we moved in and put our luggage away, <laughs> that we've was been fine for a couple of weeks. We think this is a great way to explore if you haven't tried RVing in another country yet, we hope that you'll consider doing that. We have found it to be extremely rewarding and a great way to see another country. Thanks so much for joining us, 
As always, safe travels. And thanks for watching.